always good to meet good people. Isn't that right? Amen. I got one amen from my amen. wife. She knows I'm good people. Yeah. It's always good. To, it's always good to meet good people. Amen. 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 All right, y'all gonna wake up now. I've only got 30 minutes or so. Can I get? Can I get? Uh, let me have. Can I have 35? Can I have 40? 35. <laughs> okay. Oh, praise God. Do you love the Lord this morning? Yeah. I do. I do. I found myself um, in need of a new Bible, so I'm going to use my tablet, if that's okay with you. Um, and we'll just trust the Lord. First of all, let me do the right thing. I want to take the opportunity to welcome our first-time guests. We've got a few first-time guests here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for, you know, it's, it's a hard enough thing to go into a church, any church these days. But it's extremely hard and difficult on our on our thinking when we go into a church we've never been to before. And so I'm delighted for these that have taken the time. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome our first-time guests? family, those of you that are tuning, I know there's some of you that are watching live stream this morning, for whatever reason, we're delighted that you're there. We thank you that the Holy Spirit has led you to, to tune into this channel. Now, I guarantee you this, you will hear the voice of the Lord, and you will receive from the table of his goodness, according to Psalm 23. So we encourage you to get something to write with, make yourself, get some coffee, don't fall asleep, you know, get up out of that bed, that's not going to work, get out of the bed, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, that's you, yeah, you right there, get out of the bed, and be healed by the authority of Jesus Christ, I even hear that this morning, whoever who's dealing something, you're dealing with something on the left side of your body, almost as if it's, if it's a paralysis of some sort, if you would reach down and just touch and trust God, touch that side of your body, you don't need anybody to come to you, just touch that side and say, I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. Can you do that this morning? If you do that, God is going to heal you. Now let us know, let us know that it was you. Give, give us a shout, drop us an email, something like that. Contact us. We're located at 1221st Avenue in the city of Corville, Iowa. Again, we're delighted that you're tuned in. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome our YouTube audience this morning? I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to talk this morning about the second fruit of the Spirit that's listed. Now, again, it's one, one collective fruit. But for sake of, uh, it's in nine manifestations, but for, for sake of understanding, I'm going to talk about it as if it's individual. I know it's listed individually, but it's absolutely, absolutely not an individual fruit. The reason why I say that is become, because it comes as a result of a born-again experience with the Lord. Yes. You have to be born again to be able to understand the magnitude of what God is doing in your life. Give me 45 minutes, please, if you would. Uh, I'm going to invite your attention to Galatians 5, and I'm going to read uh, from the message translation this morning, Galatians 5, verses 16 through 23. Uh, if you know the message, it's kind of lengthy, but I want to read from there, and then we'll see what the Lord says. Amen? Galatians 5, verse 16 through 23. When you have it, say amen. Galatians 5. We'll put it up on the board if you can see it's kind of difficult. And I'm reading from the message Bible. Amen. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Galatia. He says, My counsel is this live freely, animated, and motivated by God's Spirit. Please listen to the wording. Live freely, animated, and motivated by God's Spirit. The word for animated could be excited, right? Mm -hmm. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit, just as the free spirit is compatible with selfishness. These two ways of life are antithetical, so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel on any given day. Do you see that? Now the TJ's declaration about his feelings is, is very appropriate for what we're talking about this morning. He and I did not discuss this obviously. Obviously, amen? So he goes on to say, why don't you choose to be led by the Spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominated existence? Verse 19, it is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Hmm. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness, trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, all consuming yet never satisfied wants. I was going to say a brutal temper, hmm. an impotence to love or be loved, divided homes and divided lives, small-minded and lopsided 
lopsided pursuits, the vicious habits of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community. I could go on, he says. This isn't the first time that I've warned you. You know, if you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. Verse 22. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others or love, exuberance about life or joy, serenity or peace. He goes on to say we develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Would you pray with me? Father, this morning we just yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, you are the preeminent and most high welcome guest of order in this place. We thank you, God, you are not some entity, you are not an it, you are not someone who does not exist, you are not someone who laid down and finished your job and then exited the, the, the room, but rather you are here today to minister to your people. I completely surrender myself to your leading and allow you to speak through my lips and, and just make my mind clear. I just bind the spirit of the enemy that would come to cause confusion and dissension in this house, and I declare that the spirit of wisdom and revelation is freely ours. By your great grace we pray, in Jesus' name, can you say amen? Amen. amen? We've not understood, I know I have not, I've not understood the significance of what joy means in life. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm 56, we'll soon be 57, I don't feel that. Thank you, I appreciate that, she said I don't look it. But, I am that. By the calendar range of how we are able as people to measure times and seasons in our life. And what God does, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he brings something unique to our lives that can only happen once we're born again. And being born again is more than just missing hell. It's more than just, a, I've heard people say, get out of jail free card, or get out of hell, hell free card. It is the unique way of God transforming sinful nature man, which all of us were, Amen. I pray none of us are. Amen. But he takes it and he transforms it by his own Holy Spirit to bring it into something that looks maybe not so desirable on the outside, but is great on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't saying that. I'm just keep standing right here. At least I heard a couple of mild yeses. Anyway, that's okay. I'm just having fun with you. But what God does, and I'm, and I'm beginning to see this in my life, is that God uses something called joy. Mm -hmm. huh? And joy has, has very little, if anything, to do with emotion. All right. We got to understand that. Because, because this life by design and our enemy, Satan, devil, you know, formerly known as Lucifer, his plan is to rob you of the fruit of the spirit that God has placed inside of you. Amen. You don't have, listen to me, you don't have to grow into the fruit of the Spirit. Right. Listen to me well now. Because the fruit of the Spirit is implanted into your spirit when you get born again. Yeah. What happens is the fruit of the Spirit has to grow into you. Yeah. Some of y'all, that kind of matter. You don't grow into it, it grows in you. Yeah. So what I do, like we talked about last week, I start learning more and more how to love, the agape love, the style that God has unconditionally. And I'm so thankful that God brings these things to our remembrance. That's why, you know, I told the, 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 the team yesterday that were there for the new partners orientation, this is, a, this is a training ground. This is like if you, whatever your profession is, if you guys, if you got a seminar in the, in, the, in the next county over, city over, you go, you sign up for two, three days, and you come in, and what are you doing? You're relearning your craft. Isn't that right? Yeah. Don't we do that in the natural? Yeah. Well, in a spiritual sense, that's what Sundays are. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Sundays are. Sundays are not here to make your emotions feel good. Amen. Sundays are not here to boost you up and make you feel emotionally like you on cloud nine. Amen. And too many people have taken church out of, its, out, of, out of its proper context, and so they make it about them. And if, if I'm not feeling good, Pastor, make me feel good. You're not, it's not about you feeling good. It's about you being good. Yeah. And the only way you're going to be good is you have to understand that there's something going on inside of us 
that only God is controlling. Amen. Now, not just God controlling, but you have to allow him to do his work. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. This Isn't that right? Yeah. I had an opportunity to experience this firsthand on um, one day, I think it was Friday of this week. I was, uh, you know, we've had just nasty weather. And so uh, I pulled in. I had to run some errands. I pulled into my house. You know, and uh, you know, it's 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 a wide enough street, and you know, the, you know, everybody's got snow on the sides of the thing. So I couldn't. I have to get to my mailbox, like maybe some of you do. I had to walk into the street to get to it. Yeah. And so I did, like Mama told me years ago. Look both ways. Thank you very much. Yeah. Make sure. That, and then as I started to step out, I saw a car coming. So I just kind of stayed close and leaned over and opened my mailbox, reached in and pulled my mail out. I didn't think anything of it. As the person passed by me, and for those of you who know where I live, I live right next to the corner, so you know he didn't go very far. All of a sudden, he laid on his horn. I thought it was somebody I knew. So I looked up like somebody I knew. And in the process of me looking up, he flipped me the, the, the universal signal of this thing. Number one. <laughs> okay. And I thought to myself, you know, now, I'm gonna be real. I'm a pretty real transparent guy. You know, I didn't get out of the car, Kelsey, speaking in tongues. You know, you feel it? Honestly, I wasn't speaking in tongues in the car. I don't know. I don't. This I listen to pretty much Christian music, but I don't listen to just Christian music. I know that might shock some of y'all. Y'all. This is life for y'all. I'm just saying. You know? Don't let your imagination go too far. You know, I ain't sitting now. I'm just listening to something that may not have been, you know, Jesus culture. And so, so when I when I realized that he flipped me, my first thought, not action, <laughs> my first thought was to flip him back. But I didn't yield to that thought. Say amen to my She said to me in her loving way that she talks to me, guess he was having a bad day. And I said, yeah, that's it. That's it. He's having a bad day. Because see, my mind wanted to go some places where the devil would love to get me off track. And let the love leave my life. And then, and then in, in my, in the love, am I allowing the love to leave my life because I'm self-indulged and I got to, I got to re repay somebody retribution. Mm. Then I missed out. Yeah. 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 Alright, just figure out shit. It's kind of cool. It's funny how the Lord kind of lets that stuff happen in my life. Don't happen in your life, but happen in my life. <laughs> anyway, so, so in looking at joy, I'm going to read another scripture for you here. Let's, let's define joy. Can we do that? We'll do that first. From, from the Greek uh, transliterated word. I can't say, I don't speak Greek, so I'm not a Greek scholar, Hebrew scholar, so, but I can read. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So the, the word is kara, and, and you can write it down. It's the phonetic spelling. It's not the actual spelling, but it's K-H-A-R hyphen A-H apostrophe. It's kara. And it's not the same as charis, okay? You know, anybody ever heard the word charis? Right? Right? You know? Uh, so it's not the same word, but kara here, it speaks to something that is, is more than the norm. And the definition of it is, is joy. Gladness. The joy received from you, I'll read it again in a second, the cause or occasion of joy, and then it speaks lastly of persons who are one's joy. Again, it's joy, gladness, the joy received from you, the cause or occasion of joy of persons who are one's joy. All right? So and it's found quite often uh, in the Bible. It's about not, not as many as others, but this word joy, let's look at it, let's look at it uh, in another sense. Because, see, too many people equate joy to being happy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've had to grow in this. Thank you for your patience and loving, uh, loving, um, <laughs> I don't know, I don't want to use the same word again, but you've been lovingly patient in, in allowing me to begin to mature as a pastor, my wife and I. We've never done this before. Amen. You know, going on nine years now, in nine yeah. years in July. And I was, again, I, you know, I'm pretty transparent. You know, I, I would have thought that we probably at least would have 150, maybe 200 people by now. You know, amen. I received that. <laughs> but but what, I'm, what I'm saying to you is that it's the reality of life. And what happens is, because you live, because see, what happens, I like, to, I like to use this illustration many times. Why do you think God didn't just, the moment you got saved, take it in? You ever thought about it? 
Because there's life experiences down here that gives this fruit opportunity to mature inside of you. And somehow or another, we, we don't think like this, and probably you haven't heard this before. I can't remember saying it. I can't remember hearing anybody else say it. But you're going to need all of these experiences when you get to heaven. Yes. You're going to need them all. And you're going to be thankful, thankful that you allow the Spirit of God to lead you on the path of righteousness that you took the day that you started the day that you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. I believe that. So I believe that there's something that must be learned through the through the ups and downs, the vicissitudes of life, the, the all of the ins and outs and all of the hills and valleys, all of the good times, bad times, so 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 times. There's something that God is putting in us that is allowing us to understand that He is God and beside Him there is none other. Amen. And until we learn that lesson, we struggle many times. So so what happens is, and I agree up this way. I'm not saying that you're this way. I'm just saying I grew up this way. People equated whether or not they had their, their money situation to how much joy they had. Mm. There, there are many people that equate their social situation, their, their interaction with their husband or their wife or their ex or their soon-to-be ex or whatever, and, and because things aren't going well in the home, they don't, they're don't they not happy. Happiness and joy are two different things. Amen. Happiness is an emotional reaction to the circumstances that are going on in your life that appear to be positive at the moment. It looks good, so I'm happy. I got a check in the mail for a thousand that I wasn't expecting. I'm a happy guy. I got somehow or another, you know, this thing turned in my good, so now I'm happy. And happiness is not sustainable in this lifetime. Because we have an enemy who comes to affect your life and my life to cause us to not be happy. And he will put roadblocks and obstacles. I remember a couple weeks ago when I was trying to illustrate a point and Kelsey was, was trying to get to a destination and we were putting word, different blocks in his way. That's what your enemy does. He puts traps out there. Our enemy does it to cause us to stumble and to get off of joy. Yes. But if we don't know that, then we just think that life is miserable. Right. You know, there's nobody in here that goes home and they're happy all the time. Amen. You know, and, and if somehow or another we think the church is supposed to make us happy, why do you think people don't come back? Mm. Yeah. I can't preach that good. You can't either. Amen. You can't sing that good. Amen. Brother Jared, Brother Dr. Snell, I call him Brother Jared, I call him Dad, but, you know, Dad has this saying, he says, you know, uh, he said, you know, God's hap your happiness is not God's problem. He said, I can't come and stay in your closet and wait for you to get down and jump out and say, be glad, saith the Lord. There's no band that's going to, you know, there's no Kelsey and the crew are not going to jump out of your closet when you're feeling down. Are you feeling me? True. So then whose responsibility is it to make sure that you recognize this thing that I'm going through right now is subject to change, and if I just stay the course, I don't care if I'm happy, I don't care if I'm sad, the joy of the Lord is mine. Let's start to another place. Is that all right? Yeah. Nehemiah. Getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. Well, go to, yeah, go to Nehemiah. I think we'll go back to Nehemiah 8, verse 10. Very, very, very familiar passage of Scripture. When you have it, say amen. I'm going to read it from the King James Version. Nehemiah 8, 10. Praise God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and do what? Send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Can I tell you that we, unless you're a Jew sitting in here, you are like me. We were the one who God sent portions to for whom nothing was prepared. Yeah. Some of you understand that, but I'm trying to help you prophetically. So what God does is he sends to us, he gives us portions that were prepared for other nations. Oh, help me somebody. Jesus as a gift to mankind was not originally the gift for all nations. It wasn't God's plan, but it wasn't from our understanding. So what we had to do was understand that he came not just for Jews, but for Gentiles. Gentiles. And that's who we are. So he says here, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy unto our Lord, not, neither be ye sorry for what? For the Lord. Come on, say it like you know it. For the Lord. Now, how many of y'all have never heard that scripture before? How many of you have never heard that scripture before? Then why y'all acting like y'all don't know it now? <laughs> I'm going to read it again. Read it with me, just that portion. For this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, understand this. 
Just like, just like your faith is not yours. Y'all do know that your faith is not yours, right? Yes. Yeah. Whose faith is it? God. You do know that, that love is not yours. Right. Huh? Right. For God so loved the world. Right. So whose who's love is it? God. Why do we think our joy is our Because we are selfish. Or we're immature. Mm. Now I'm going to look at my wife because I don't want no ugly looks. I don't want no letters. I ain't going to read them no way. Don't email me. Don't text me. Nothing. Because there are more people that are immature in the realm of joy than in most other realms, period, in the world. And if we understood how powerful joy is, because joy is a force of God. Joy makes me. Oh, help me, Lord. I, you know, I, I, I about couldn't contain myself when the Lord started telling me how he wanted me to present this. And, you know, so I was giddy yesterday. If y'all know, I was giddy this morning, you know. And, and, I, and I might take off running if I don't. If I, I might just have to do that. Because, see, joy is what causes me to understand that what God has promised me has already become mine. All I have to do is stay in a place of joy, understanding that he cannot lie. He is faithful beyond understanding. He, the Bible says that when he can swear by none other, he swore by himself. Hallelujah. If God makes a promise, baby, you can take it to the bank. Help me, Lord. I gotta put down the put on beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, and I gotta stop being depressed because of what I see around me. What I see around me has nothing to do with the power of God working in me. Yeah. And the linchpin of that is joy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna prove it to you in just a minute. How much more time I got? Thank you. Okay, are y'all right? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 12. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this from the expanded Bible. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Can you have a say amen? Glory to God. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Ha. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, there's somebody in my sins. Thank you, Father. Hebrews 12, amen. verse 1. You have it? Amen. My heading starts out saying, follow Jesus' example. You know, years ago, they had the little bracelets, WWJD, right? Yes. And I remember saying this yesterday to this, this group, and when I told them that little story about being flipped off, you know, I said, it wouldn't look good for the, for the uh, pastor of a church to stand out in the middle of the street and flip somebody off back. <laughs> It wouldn't look very good. That'd be, that would be just the time when somebody would have one of these phones out. Amen. Amen. And be on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm a, I'm a relative unknown, and I'm okay with that. But my face would be plastered everywhere. You know, and it's just like the devil to set you up, thinking you think that it's just some ordinary situation, and really what he's hoping is that he can bring down the name of Jesus because every people are watching you. They're not just watching me. Come on now. They're watching you. Yes. You think they're not, they're watching you. You go through hard times, hard times come, baby. Come on. Man. Who has been through hard times in here? You ain't living long enough. Right. Or you live in a, in a bubble. <laughs> Hard times come. You're not exempt from it because you're a child of God. Right. But you right. are prepared for it because you're a child of God. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a good place to say, man. Yeah. I'm prepared for all things. I am, I am ready for all things that will come my way because I understand that if I just draw water from the wells of salvation with joy yeah. and, and bring it on, baby, I'm ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. But it ain't going to feel good. No. Amen. 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 Hebrews 12, verse 1, therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of people, or witnesses, your, your King James probably says, whose lives tell us what faith means, let us run the race that is before us and never give up. Come on now, you're running the race, aren't you? Yeah. I'm not running against Dave. You're not running against me. You sure ain't running against the devil. Right. You're running for yourself. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. You can't get tired. You know what tired people do? They stop coming to church. Mm. Mm. And they can't figure out why they're tired. Mm. You know, you, this life was never designed for you to 
can make it on your own. Yeah. Say that. That's why people, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm sorry. I'm not going to apologize. For those of you that don't have a home church, and all you do is sitting out there watching two, YouTube, two, you, YouTube, you need to find a home church. Yeah. But find one that's preaching the word by faith. Yes. Don't go to all these weak, pasty, mealy mouth churches that don't, don't tell you anything. Yes. Ain't nobody helping me this morning. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm not mad at you. I'm telling you. You got to run this race. It's not quick. Thank you, Jesus. And stop finding fault with every church you go to. It ain't you. It ain't them. It's you. Amen. 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 Thank you. I ain't going to repent. You can't judge Oh, that church, they treat me bad. Hmm. It wasn't too bad till you got there. Oh. <laughs> no perfect place. Oh, no. Oh, no. Help me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pull your religious dozen. I'm just saying. What verse did I leave off at? We should remove from our lives anything that would get in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you this? And this is not a knock. I get it. Mental, mental illness is a real deal. Yeah. But not all mental illness manifests the same way. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something else. There is a cure for all mental illness. Yeah. And I know there's health professionals in here. I get that. But I'm, what I'm saying to you is that the, the first call should not always be to the doctor. Yeah. Right. Right. Preach. Right. Amen. Right. The first call should be to Jesus. Yeah. 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 Unless he's not the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Mm. Unless he's changed. Mm. I told you guys this. And I, I'm not, again, I'm not ashamed. Ain't no shame in my life. Y'all know this, right? Y'all like when there's no, ain't no shame in your life. Right. Yeah. Shame is going to turn into something detrimental to you. And it will cause cancers and cysts and tumors to rise up in you. Because the devil never wants you to deal with shame. Yeah. Yeah. God never intended for you to carry it. So what do I do? I put it out in the open so everybody can see it. At age 19, I tried to take my own life. But God intervened. Amen. Yeah. You're telling me that God is not God. He's, my God, I'm telling you, I'm getting excited up in here. God is so care, concerned about each other as, as individuals that he will do whatever he needs to do to get the message to you that you are special to him. Yeah. Doctors will medicate and they will give. And there's some people, if you ain't got no faith, you need a doctor. Amen. Yeah. It'll take something. Amen. Amen. Help me, Jesus. Okay, I better. I don't even know how I got there. Verse 2. Let us look, listen, let us look only to Jesus. The one who began, my Bible says, the pioneer and founder, the prince of our faith, who makes it perfect. He suffered death, come on now, on the cross. Why? Accepting the shame as if it were nothing. That's why you don't have to carry shame. It is, it is such a, a widespread epidemic as, as federal funding gets cut. This government is so dysfunctional, my God. I, I, I thank God for the office of the president. That's all I'm going. I'm not going any further than that. I thank God and honor the office. I pray for the president of the United States because that's what God mandated. I don't talk yeah. about it. But I declare that if the government runs out of money, the church house better be having, having some answers for people who have mental illness and other issues. Yeah. My mom used to work at a mental, mental facility in Willard, New York, upstate New York. And I remember my mom coming in talking about the people that were hurting so bad years and years ago. And that was back in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing, it hasn't done anything but get progressively worse. As funding has been cut, people are still hurting out here. Amen. They need to know what's going on inside of you. They need to know that you have joy inside of you, yeah. that you have love and faith. And the Lord Jesus Christ, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. Yeah. 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 He's the one that removed the, 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 the shotgun that day. He did it by the power of his grace. Thank you. Thank you. I can't take credit for it. Thank you. Are y'all feeling me this morning? Yes. Yes. Don't tell me, don't tell me that spirit doesn't try to hit the people in the church. If it can destroy the church house, the other folks have nothing to hold on to. Yes. If it can kill the pastor, then there's nothing for the for the righteous to do. Yes. I know, I know, it gets tough out here. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Against him. The Bible says that he looked and he said, I will encourage my 
Winston Salem, Salisbury, North Carolina. And I remember having to go. I got three kids and a wife. And I drive up to the gas station. And, 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 and just, I'm like, Jesus, you got to tell me something. And what he said, I didn't want to do because pride was getting in the way. Mm. Pride will stop joy from working in your life. Uh -huh. Until you swallow your pride, you will never have the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Come on and give the Lord a hand of praise. Yeah.
because I was living around. I don't care what they don't like, baby. I am not running for them. I'm running for him. Yeah. Yeah. That means I got to push some people aside. I got to be able to turn, turn around and say so long, bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. Goodbye to my haters. Yeah. Well, that church is in the hotel. I ain't going there. Good. Don't come. Find someplace else. Yo, somebody else will come. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. For some of y'all, y'all like, man, I ain't never been in church like this. I told you. <laughs> uh, it's good. It's good. I am not shy. Right. I gave up too much to be shy. Right. I gave up Bridget warm weather. That's a lot right there. Left family behind. Left good restaurants. A variety of them. Jesus, come on, Master. He's coming through all of the hell and all the stuff that 
was joy in front of me. The joy of the reunion of heaven. The joy that my sons and daughters will no longer be bound by sin. The joy that I am an overcomer and a conqueror. And so are you. Yes, Amen. yes, 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 yes. yes. Now, joy. God help me in this place. Hallelujah. Turn to Isaiah 12. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. If y'all move faster, I wouldn't be so long. Help me, Lord. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. Isaiah 12. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Isaiah 12, 3 and 4. From the message Bible, I sent this to our, our leadership team this morning. Joyfully, you pull up buckets of water from the wells of salvation. Lady, listen, salvation is not just salvation is not just you going to heaven, like I said, to get out of hell free car. Salvation is, listen, I get healing, God. I get healing. Anytime I need it, I get healing. I pull that bucket up, it's got healing in it. I pull it up, it's got love in it. I pull it up, it's full of faith. I pull it up, it's full of prosperity. I pull it up, it's full of kindness. I pull it up, it's full of patience. Long suffering. When I pull it up, what do you need, baby? I got what you need. I just pull it up. And listen, if you need help pulling, if you need me help you pull yours up, just stick with me. We'll both pull it up together. Right. Right. I'm doing it and the joy is coming because, because as it's coming up, the water is refreshing my soul. It says, and as you do it, you'll say, you'll give thanks to God. Y'all missed a good place to say thanks to God. Thank you will give thanks to God. Thank you, God. You will call Thank out you. his name, Jesus. Yeah. Ask him anything he says. Shout to the nations. Tell them what he's done. Spread the news of his great reputation. I don't know about you, but I know good well I wouldn't be. I was a wreck going someplace to happen. Yeah. Amen. I don't even have a name anymore. He changed my name. Thank God. Amen. Yeah, I used to be the drunk. I used to be the liar and the cheater. I used to be the guy that had to hide behind the mask for being good. And nothing was good. Nothing was good. It looked good on the outside, but it was nothing good on the inside. It changed my name. And he imparted joy into me. And I don't know about you, but I received it again right now. Amen. I received it too. Hallelujah. Last scripture, I get out your way. 2 Corinthians 4. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God. I don't know about you, but I don't preach myself happy. I, I, I need, I need, I need to. Sure. I need it, Randy. Huh? Come on now. In the, the Bible says that in the night seasons, when you're in there and you can't find the light because it's so dark, Micah 7 and 8 says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. Amen. But then he says that when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. In other words, he comes in my darkest of times. Shine in the heavenly light of his grace and mercy. Shine in the heavenly light of his love and his joy in me. God is not disappointed in you. Amen. Yeah. He put his disappointment on Jesus. And all the devil does is you just aren't worthy. You're just no good. If you ain't no good, you, ain't, you don't belong to him. Mm. You don't belong to Jesus. So scared somebody might see a flaw in us. So scared. Galatians 6, verse 1. You don't have to turn there. My brother, if a brother be overtaken to fall or fault, Ye that are spiritual, for all the spiritual folks in here, come on! Yeah. Restore yeah. such a one in the spirit of meekness. Yeah. Consider your own self. Yeah. Yeah. Could be you yeah. dealing with what they're dealing with, but God's mercy. Oh my God. How dare I look down my nose at somebody who ain't got it together like I think they should? Come on, come on. You ain't that good. Mm. And the biggest culprit of that is we do it to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I said I was getting out your way. I am. Glory to God. Now, if this don't make you shout, can y'all see me wiggling my toe? <laughs> Your wood is wet and waterlogged. Mm. Mm. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 through 18. So we're not giving up. No. How could we? 
Even though on the outside, I'm reading from the message translation, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. Woo, Jesus, he says, on the inside, where God is making new life. Ah, 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 ah. I got new life this morning. Oh, God, don't put your actual fingers and hands together. Give God praise. Give God praise. Too proud to, to, to run. Uh -oh. oh, speak, speak. Eight, nine years later, speak. the pride has fallen. Not that there was much anyway, because like I said about the gas station was a sailor. You gotta learn at some point pride don't do nobody no good but the devil. Amen. Too cute. She was too tight. Where's some other ones? My corns hurt. Get him healed by the power of God. I said, my bunions. Everybody caring about a bunch of bunions? Ah, Jesus. Help me, God. I know, I know. Y'all think I'm ridiculous, but that's okay. Let me finish reading. Hallelujah. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, say the inside. the inside. Where God is making new life. Say that. God is making new life in me. Come on, tell your neighbor, he's making new life in me. He's making new life in me. Now turn it around and tell them he's making new life in you. Come on, act like you can't say that. He's making new life in you. He's making new life in you. Now the day goes by without his unfolding grace. Oh, this is it. These hard times. Come on, stand up to your feet. Put your Bibles down. Y'all too comfortable for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up. Yes. I know, I know, I know, I know. My wife alluded to it. Yeah, we, this culture is a diverse church. I get it. But it ain't just black people to run. Who <laughs> are, man? I'm going to talk real plain to you. I'm going to talk real plain, real plain. Hallelujah. It ain't just men that run. It ain't just women that run. Hallelujah. You need to get a dance in your step. Yeah. You need to delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desire of your heart. You need to turn that, that, that frown into a, a turn it upside down. Yeah. You need to show the devil that you're not out of it yet. He, he tried to keep you. He tried to kill you with cancer. And he couldn't do it. He tried to shut you down with diabetes. And you're still standing. Your husband left. And you're still a woman of God. Your wife left. And you're a better man now with honor than you were with her. Help me somebody. Sweet potato and a little red potato. 
yeah. What's the other kind? What's the little white kind? What do they call it? You no potato. You know, the, 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 I don't need sweet potato. I'm really careful. But there's some big honking things. You know, my daddy used to call them things and all the other potatoes. And I don't do that. I didn't really do potatoes back then. But boy, when I look at the small potato, the new potato, and I can slice that sucker up and put it in some hot grease out here this morning. And I'm looking forward because that small potato is not going to keep me down. Amen. Because oh, the obstacle that God that is in your face right now is small potatoes. Okay. Tell your name is small potatoes. Small potatoes. Come on, that was a small potatoes. Small. Ain't nothing to it, it's just small potatoes. He says, how? Compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us, there's far more here than meets the eye. The things that we see now are here today and gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. Can I tell you that your victory will last forever? Your healing will last forever. Your love will last forever. Your faith will last forever. Your joy will last forever. Your salvation will last forever. From age to age throughout all eternity. Yeah, no.